Dr. Pramath Raj Sinha is an entrepreneur, institution builder, academic, executive and philanthropist. He was the founding dean of Indian School of Business, the Royal calls it ISB, and one of the founders of Harappa Education 9.9 .9 Group, Ashoka University, Vedika Scholars Program for Women, and Naropa Fellowship. Uh, he was formerly the CEO of Anand Bazar Patrika Group, a leading media company and a partner at McKinsey and Company. He was listed in 2013 by Thinkers 50 as one of India's top 50 management thinkers and in 2015 he was named the personality of the year by FIKI for his contribution to education. May I request you sir to please enlighten us with your address. Sanjay Jenaji and Prakash Sahuji, thank you very much for inviting me here. It's a great privilege to be here. Uh, I've not spent much time in Orissa, but I've spent time with a lot of wonderful people from Orissa. Uh, and uh, I think Sanjayji, you are absolutely right that the rich heritage that you enjoy uh, is something to be really proud of. Uh, when you go last in a session like this, then you run the risk of repeating what other people have said. So I had come prepared with a little set of notes, but all those points have actually been covered. Uh, so I'll try and build on what uh, Professor Karmalkar, uh, Dr. Anand and Natasha ji talked about. The, I, I want to make three very specific points. Uh, the first one is about education and learning uh, and Prakash Sahuji kindly referred to a book that I have written recently about that and which might be relevant to some of the young people in the room and some of the parents in the room. Uh, I'll also talk second about some of the issues that Dr. Anand raised uh, because one of the things that we should be worried about is access and all of this wonderful education that we are talking about, is it truly reaching the very last student? After 75 years, we are still struggling to get to the very last student. So what will it take to get there? Uh, and the last thing I'll talk about uh, is the role of technology and digital and online learning in all of this. Uh, because I think as a country, we have no choice uh, but to embrace it. So talking about education and learning, I think the NEP is very timely and everything that has been referred to uh, by Dr. Anand and Professor Karmalkar about how the NEP addresses the needs of the future, I heartily endorse. But there are two reasons why these are very important. Number one, I'll start with a, give you a personal example. Uh, when I was about 17, 18 years old, uh, I did not know what I should study. Uh, I was a bit clueless. And even today, 17, 18 year olds are confused. They don't know. In fact, they have many more options today than I had. Uh, fortunately, I got into IIT. Uh, I studied at IIT Kanpur. For IIT Kanpur, my rank in JE was not very high, so I had only very few options. I could study metallurgical engineering or I could study aeronautical engineering, and I knew very little about these two subjects, but I wanted to go to Kanpur because my friends were there. And at least in my time, Kanpur was very famous. It was also close to Bihar, where I'm from, so I Hindi mein baat -baat kar sakte the logo se. So, when I talk to my father about what I should do, he says, I don't know anything about metallurgy or aeronautical. Uh, but he had set a goal for me. His goal was that I should get a job that would pay me 10,000 rupees a month. He was not expecting that the starting job would be 10,000 rupees a month. His, his, uh, his counsel to me was, that I kabhi bhi during your career, 10,000 rupees mahina kamana padega, nahi to you will not be able to uh, live your life comfortably. So that was my goal when I went for counseling. And uh, during the counseling, I was given this option. So 
I said, but I want to study aeronautical because usme plane vein udane ko milega. So the professor said, ha, you can take aeronautical. Then I said, lekin usme naukri milegi to 10,000 rupay ki salary milegi ki nahi. So he said, ki yaan mil sakti hai, but there are very few options for aeronautical in India. Ek HAL hai, you can join them. But if metallurgy karoge, then you will get a lot more options because you can go at Sale, you can work at Tisco, you can work at Telco. These were all companies that I knew of. I was in Jamshedpur, Tata was a big name. So I chose metallurgy and studied metallurgical engineering for four years. I passed out in 1986. I was telling Professor Karmalkar, he's also from IIT Madras, three years my senior. But I must tell you that for 37 years that I graduated, I have not done any metallurgical engineering. I spent four years studying metallurgy. I had one course at that time, which was a new area called computer programming. In that course, I got an A. So I was very proud of myself that I got an A in computer programming. And because I had got an A in computer programming, Tata Burroughs Limited actually gave me a job that paid me many more times than the 10,000 rupees that my father had set the target for. Actually got me a passport and visa to go to the United States and work. I would have been working at TCS now if I had taken that job. But the point is that for one course, one course in four years, out of more than 50 courses that I would have done, I was given a job just for that one course, not for four years of metallurgy. This was happening 37 years ago. This is true much more today that what you study doesn't lead you to what you do. And the bigger problem is that places like Meta, where Natasha ji works, they are creating jobs for which the course doesn't exist. You can't predict what will be the job of the future. So, if you can't tell us what will be the job of the future, then how will we study for it? There is no way to teach for the future. So, what do you do? Do you not teach? I am coming to that. The second problem is that all of you young people who are here, you have a real bigger responsibility than I had. My responsibility was to take a job for 10,000 rupees. Your responsibility is how will you save the planet? We will all be gone, but climate change is here to stay. And unless you all don't stall for climate change, if you don't solve for health, if you don't solve for education, Dr. Anand was saying that only one in three or less than one in three students is going to college, unless you don't solve for that, we are finished as a planet. Now, how will you solve those problems? You will not solve those problems by studying one subject. Because one subject does not give you the solution to these problems. These problems are multidisciplinary. These problems are interdisciplinary. So by studying one discipline, you are actually disqualifying or not making yourself capable to solve the problem. To solve this problem, you have to do what Professor Karmalkar talked about, you need to understand critical thinking, asking the right questions, looking at a problem from multiple perspectives, being open to the views of other people. Ye padhana hoga aur ye seekhna hoga. Communication, he mentioned, these are all in the NEP. Uh, have holistic learning. Many other points that have been made about education. So the challenge now is that from studying subjects, what we have to do is help our young people develop a love for learning. From studying, you have to move to loving learning. Uh, there's a, our anchor, I, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, uh, gave the Doha from Kabir where she talked about the Dhai Akshar Prem Ke. A lot of people have given examples of the Gurukul system that we had. People have mentioned 
Takshila and Nalanda and Vallabhi and Vikramshila, the old universities, they all actually espoused this philosophy to inculcate in young people a love for learning. वहाँ पे ये नहीं बोलते थे कि आप आए तो मेटलर्जी पढ़ो या मेडिसिन पढ़ो या हिस्ट्री पढ़ो इन फैक्ट देर द्वारपाल वुड डू एन एंट्रेंस टेस्ट ऑफ हु एवर हु केम फ्रॉम वट एवर क्लास और बैकग्राउंड और इकोनॉमिक बैकग्राउंड एंड देन द द्वारपाल वुड से कि यू हैव बीन एडमिटेड टू द यूनिवर्सिटी एंड यू कुड चूज which acharya you went to study for and i am not making this up the chinese documents that have been written about how takshila used to work and nalanda used to work have documented this that this is how education used to work it has happened through the last few centuries that education became about getting people jobs